Okay, hi guys, I'm Tommy from Delicode and I'm going to walk you through how to make your Kinect and NiMate work as a MIDI controller in Ableton Live. And let's open the MIDI controller tab. This is where the data from your body movements is actually transformed into MIDI messages. So you can specify what message you send from each parameter like your position or your velocity and from here you can even specify the range where Kinect picks your motions. Now let's look at the triggers. It's a new feature in the latest NI Mate. It allows you to basically create launch triggers and pads around you that are virtual in the air above you or either in the front of you. Now, let's first check your MIDI settings are right. Oh yes, a driver bus 1 and channel 1. You should, if you're running OSX, you should check that your audio MIDI setup is correctly set. So if you see the IAC driver and devices online, you're ready to go. And inside Ableton, you can check the MIDI settings. IAC driver should be track on, remote on. Okay, so let's check the demo patch. It's basically two tracks going into one group and these tracks are set to crossfader A and B. So it's good for DJing and it's easy to use the crossfader to switch between the loops. And I also have two return tracks, ping pong delay and reverb. And then on the group track, I have a few more effects. There's my delay and two beat repeaters, auto filter and an EQ. Okay, now let's make our first MIDI mapping. We'll go to NI Mate, we enable the MIDI control and solo the body Z. So now I can go back to Ableton, add MIDI mapping, and now as you can see it's adding those MIDI values constantly. So you should sometimes disable the MIDI control in order to avoid these false mappings. Okay, now it's there in the frequency and okay, I'm moving back, it's increasing, I'm moving forth, it's decreasing. Oh, but I want it to work the opposite way. So good thing in Ableton is the invert range in the MIDI mapping menu. And now when I move forward and when I move backward, you can see the auto filter slide up and down like it should. Let's assign the depth, the set value of the right hand to the effect, the distortion delay effect I have. Oh, that's kind of nasty effect. Maybe I should actually enable one of the toggle triggers to allow me to set the effect on and off. Let's disable the MIDI control for now and enable MIDI triggers. So now I have a circle of five. I want to have three instead. I don't need five for this demo. Okay, each of those is now sending MIDI trigger data to Ableton. Now let's select in MIDI mapping the effect on off button and assign it. Oh, I should also change the mode to toggle. So every time I push the button, it stays on and every time I take it off, it remains off. All right, let's try it out. Here you can see the mode of the effect is changing. It's on and off all the time, so. Okay, now let's assign rest of the toggles to sense A and B. So I want to send the mix to ping pong and then the other toggle to make it go to reverb. Now ping pong and reverb. That's easy. But you can never have actually <laughs> enough of these triggers. I need more. So the layer two, let's make another circle. And well, two isn't enough actually. I need three and Actually, the rest of the parameters, you can switch and customize the circular form of the triggers as you like. But now, okay, we have the trigger mode and if we map it to beat repeat, for example, here, let's map the rest of this at the same time. Yes. And then finally the EQ cut. And I don't actually want the EQ to boost it, so I'll set the maximum to zero and invert the range. Now let's see what happens. EQ cut, beat repeater 1, and 2. So triggers are good for effects, you don't want to keep on all the time. Okay, now let's 
at the full MIDI control. Enable the MIDI controller. And I made, and now we have our body motion MIDI back. So I can use the filter sweep and stuff like that. But the crossfade I introduced in the beginning still remains unmapped. Let's do that. So the body exposition. And then select the crossfader. Now you can see it's mapped. And when I move left and right in the front of Kinect, I can actually just switch between the two tracks playing. This is fun. <laughs> So hopefully this demonstration gave you a little bit of overview what you can actually do with Kinect and Animate with Ableton Live. And because it's standard MIDI, you can use it with any digital audio workstation software you like. And in case you haven't noticed, in addition to MIDI, Animate also supports OSC fully. So in case you're using OSC in your projects, you should definitely try the OSC mapping features as well. All right, I guess that's it. Thank you.